Now that you've learned some of the basic concepts of Combine, it's time to jump in and learn about two of Combine's core components, publishers and subscribers. At the heart of Combine is the publisher. It publishes or emits events that can include values of interest. If you've developed on Apple platforms before, you can think of a publisher as kind of like notification center. What observes a publisher in Combine is referred to as a subscriber. It attaches to or subscribes to a publisher, imagine that, and it can then receive the values and events the publisher emits. The whole process goes like this. A subscriber indicates that it wants to subscribe to a publisher. The publisher then issues a subscription to the subscriber. Now the subscriber can request values from the publisher. And the publisher can oblige by sending values to the subscriber. A publisher can continue to send values until it sends a completion event to the subscriber to indicate that it won't send any more values. This is called a marble diagram, and the vertical bar represents a normal I'm finished completion event. A publisher can also complete with a failure event, which is shown as a red X in a marble diagram. Just remember that once a publisher emits a completion event, it's done and can no longer emit any more values or another completion event. The requirements of a publisher and subscriber are defined in protocols. Here's the publisher protocol and one of its most crucial extensions. The publisher protocol defines an output associated type for the types of values a publisher will produce and an associated type for the type of error it may emit or never if it's guaranteed to never emit an error. A subscriber calls subscribe on a publisher to attach to it and the implementation of subscribe will call receive subscriber to actually create the subscription. Notice that subscribe and receive must line up the subscriber output and error types. So that takes care of the publisher. Now let's take a look at the subscriber protocol. It defines an input associated type for the type of values the subscriber will receive, and this type must match the output from the publisher. It also defines a failure type or never if there can't be errors, just like in the publisher protocol. If there is a failure type, it must match the publisher's failure type. The publisher calls receive subscription on the subscriber to give it the subscription. And the publisher calls receive on the subscriber to send it a new value. When it's done, the publisher calls receive completion on the subscriber to tell it that it has finished producing values either normally or due to an error. The curious of you may be wondering about that custom combine identifier convertible. This is just a protocol that defines a combine identifier requirement, which is used to uniquely identify each publisher stream along with the default implementation. There's one more protocol to take a look at for now. Don't worry, it's a short one. The subscription protocol defines the connection between the publisher and the subscriber. A subscriber calls request to indicate it's willing to receive more values up to a max number, or it can specify that it's willing to receive an unlimited number of values. This concept of a subscriber stating how many values it's willing to receive is known as back pressure management. Without it, a subscriber could get flooded with more values from the publisher than it can handle, and this can lead to problems. You'll learn more about managing back pressure in a later episode. So what's up with that cancelable in the protocol definition? Cancelable defines just a single method, cancel. Subscriptions return a cancelable type as a cancellation token and can manually call cancel on it to cancel the subscription. That's a lot to take in, so no worries if all this doesn't make total sense just yet. It soon will. How about jumping into some code? Here in the beginning playground for this episode, there are two things already defined for you. A subscription set. This is where you'll store your subscriptions. Notice that it's a set of any cancelable. Any cancelable is just a concrete implementation of the cancelable protocol. You learned a moment ago that you can manually call cancel on a subscription to cancel it. However, you can also add these tokens to a collection and they'll be automatically canceled when that collection is about to be deallocated. 
There's one more thing I want to show you before you get to writing some code. Open Sources in the Project Navigator and select supportcode.swift. It contains a helper function example of. You'll use this function to wrap each example you'll code throughout this course. Okay, back to the main playground page. I mentioned earlier that you can think of a publisher as kind of like Notification Center. Actually, Notification Center has a combined method that can broadcast notifications. To see this in action, add a new example to your playground. First, you get a handle to the default Notification Center, then create a notification name and a publisher for your notification. Option click on Publisher for Object, and you'll see that it returns a publisher that emits an event when the Notification Center broadcasts a notification. So what's the point of publishing notifications when a Notification Center is already capable of broadcasting its notifications without a publisher? Glad you asked. You can think of these types of methods as a bridge from the old to the new, a way to combinify existing APIs such as Notification Center. Okay, let's finish off this example. First, create a subscription to the publisher, then post a notification, and finally cancel the subscription. Run the playground and you'll see the following. You created a subscription by calling sync on the publisher, but don't let the obscurity of that method name give you a syncing feeling. Option click on sync and you'll see that it simply provides an easy way to attach a subscriber with closures to handle the output of a publisher. In this example, you ignore those closures and instead just print a message to indicate that a notification was received. Remember that handsome graphic at the beginning of this video that showed all that back and forth between a publisher and a subscriber? Want to see that interplay in your actual code? Of course you do, and it's super easy to do. Just insert the print operator right before the sync. Remember that operators are just methods declared on a publisher. Rerun the playground and check it out. Print logs every publishing event so you can see exactly what's going on. The subscription is created and received by the subscriber, it requests unlimited values, it receives the notification and prints out the message, and then the subscription is canceled. Pretty cool, right? So about that unlimited bit. The sync operator will continue to receive as many values as the publisher emits. This is known as unlimited demand, which you'll learn more about shortly.